afternoon. You're watching the English newscast on Future Television. I'm Linda Tini, and these are today's headlines. Environment Minister Mohamed Mashnu reveals that a number of tenders have been made by companies to handle Lebanon's waste disposal crisis. The Lebanese army arrests a suspect believed to be involved in the kidnapping of a university student after a car chase in East Lebanon. And 15 people are killed as a car bombing goes off in the eastern part of the Afghan capital, Kabul. Environment Minister Mohamed Al-Mashnu has revealed that a number of tenders have been made by companies to handle Lebanon's waste disposal crisis. During a press conference, he said a decision over which company will tackle the garbage disposal will be announced in the upcoming days. He explained that these companies will take care of disposing waste in six regions in Lebanon, and a long-term solution to the problem will hopefully be reached. The minister vowed not to abandon this file and said it was inevitable to establish a landfill regardless of the protests. Lebanon plunged in a waste disposal crisis following the closure of the Nami landfill on July 17th. The government failed to find an alternative to the landfill, resulting in overflowing trash dumpsters throughout the capital and Mount Lebanon. A temporary deal was recently reached to collect the waste, although their dump locations were not disclosed. Germany has reportedly proposed to export the waste by sea, a suggestion the cabinet is still studying. It is set to convene next week to continue examining the issue. And joining me on the line to discuss this matter further is environmental consultant Antoine Abou Moussa. Hi, Antoine. Hi. Can you tell us a little about your opinion about the Environment Minister's plans to resolve the garbage crisis? Well, the decision of the, uh, the, the government, uh, it was uh, in the beginning of 2015. Uh, we have um, like two problems, main problems about this decision, number one. So uh, one, you have the freedom of choosing the techniques that was given to all um, the companies that will, will be bidding. Uh, this freedom of choice uh, is opening the door to many techniques that are not really uh, environmental or, uh, or protecting the health of the citizens. Uh, by that I mean incineration, it, uh, it might mean uh, more landfilling, uh, and these techniques are uh, totally uh, are not, are not acceptable by the civil society and the experts. Two, uh, the privatization of this public service uh, that should be within the hands of the municipalities is once again taken and given to either one company or an oligopoly of, of, of companies that will uh, even more reduce the power of the municipalities and reduce their funds. So our plan is uh, really simple. Uh, we're going we're gonna to reveal it in the beginning of next week, which will give more money to the municipalities, protect more the environment, and uh, will be socially accepted. Is the solution sustainable? Um, our, our solution, our proposition? Yes. Our, our proposition is totally um, um, uh, yeah, and it's sustainable because it, uh, it takes into consideration the three pillars of sustainable development, which are economy, uh, society, and environment. In our plan, we are providing environmental solutions. We are providing techniques that are and technologies less costly than what, uh, what are proposed right now, and uh, they will be environmentally uh, very sound and very good for the environment. Does your plan include recycling? Definitely, that's uh, number one. Our plan uh, will have reducing, recycling, and maybe at the end uh, a small amount of waste to energy, but definitely not the whole amount of waste in Lebanon. And at the end, any remaining uh, inert material or ultimate uh, waste that will remain can be used in the uh, rehabilitation of any quarries in Lebanon. Do you think the government will be supportive of, of this plan that you're proposing? So far, they weren't, but we are now asking for a meeting to uh, discuss this uh, plan with the government. Okay. Well, that was environmental consultant, Mr. Antoine Abou Moussa. Thank you so much for being with us Thank today. You. Prime Minister Tamam Slam has discussed the country's trash crisis with UN Special Coordinator for Lebanon, Sigrid Kog, as well as increased power cuts amid a week-long heat wave. Kog said... She also noted the extension of senior military positions during the meeting at the Grand Sarai in downtown Beirut, adding she was hopeful this will contribute to maintaining Lebanon's stability at a critical time. The Free Patriotic Movement of MP Michel Aoun has held intense consultations to come up with a strategy to confront a decision by Defense Minister Samir Mo'bel to extend the terms of top military officials. 
Aung's Change and Reform Bloc is expected to announce its official stance following an extraordinary meeting in Rabia on Saturday. On Thursday, Mu'bil extended the terms of Army Commander General Jean Ahwaji, Military Chief of Staff Major General Walid Salman, and Higher Defense Council Chief General Mohamed Khair by one year each. Aoun sources say the FPM had been tricked through Mu'bil's decision and did not rule out unexpected street protests by the FPM. The sources accused Mu'bil of turning his back at an initiative made by General Security Chief Major General Abbas Ibrahim to resolve the dispute on the appointments. The initiative, which has allegedly received the blessing of Interior Minister Nuhad al mashnu calls for the raising the retirement age of the Army and security officers for three years. Telecom's Minister Boutros Harib says street protests led by Free Patriotic Movement leader Michel Aoun against security extensions will not yield any results. Harib said it's Aoun's right to hint at street action within the law but said he hopes Aoun doesn't, take, doesn't make this mistake since the extension has entered into force and protesting won't benefit him. Labor Minister Sejan Azzi has unveiled a plan to clamp down on corruption inside his ministry, urging citizens not to pay bribes for expedited services. Azzi said the vast majority of Labor Ministry employees are hard workers, but there are some who seek to undermine his attempts to bring about reforms in the ministry. Some media outlets have been fabricating things, he said, moaning that cases of corruption have been exaggerated in the media to tarnish his image. The minister said the anti-corruption campaign was the first of its kind in the labor ministry and will go on for at least a month until officials and citizens begin to see results. He also called for the swift passage of draft laws to allow the minister to make decisions without the need of cabinet approval. As he also complained of miserable work conditions at his ministry, urging the state to secure funds to improve the ministry building and create a better working environment for employees. The Lebanese army has arrested a suspect believed to be involved in the kidnapping of a university student after a car chase in East Lebanon. A security source said the suspect, Farhat Ali Ismail, was wounded during the chase on the outskirts of Brital and flown by an army helicopter to the nearby Abla army barracks for interrogation into the kidnapping of 20-year-old Mark al Haj Musa one day earlier. Ismail was arrested during a three-hour search for suspects and other fugitives, which ended around 10.30 a.m. this morning. The Lebanese army confirmed Ismail's arrest but did not link it to the abduction case. A military statement said Ismail is wanted for several felonies, including theft, holding individuals by force of arms, participating in terrorist acts and shooting incidents. It said an assault rifle, a pistol and a quantity of lightweight ammunition found on Ismail were seized. Musa was kidnapped from his car on Thursday morning in Mount Lebanon. The University of Balaman student was stopped by two cars on his way home to Big Faya. His kidnappers are reportedly demanding a $1 million ransom. And coming up next, a French woman who was abducted in Yemen in February is freed. More details after the break. Welcome back. A French woman who was abducted in Yemen in February has been freed and has reportedly arrived in Oman. French President François Hollande's office said the woman, Isabelle Prime, will return to France in the coming hours. Prime and her Yemeni translator, Shirin Makawi, were abducted by fighters in the capital, Sana'a, on February 24th, while the pair were on their way to work. Yemeni tribal sources said in March that Prime will be released, but only Makawi was freed at the time. In recent years, tribesmen have taken foreigners hostage to press the government to provide them with services or to free jailed relatives. Fifteen people were killed when a car bombing went off early this morning in the eastern part of the Afghan capital, Kabul. The blast also wounded nearly 400 others. Police say all the victims are civilians. Women and children were among the casualties of the powerful blast, which rattled homes across the city, damaging buildings and shattering windows. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has visited Hanoi to mark the 20th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Vietnam and the United States. The communist country's capital is Kerry's final stop in his Middle East and Southeast Asia tour. Kerry met with top Vietnamese leaders, including President Trong Tan Sang and Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Tham Binh Nhin to discuss bilateral and regional issues. He is also scheduled to meet with Communist Party leader Nguyen Phu Trong, who made a first-ever visit to Washington last month as the head of Vietnam's ruling Communist Party. 
The U.S. and Vietnam are working together to help Vietnam improve its naval enforcement capabilities as Vietnam is among the Southeast Asian nations with competing claims with China over disputed areas of the South China Sea. John Stewart said goodbye to The Daily Show on Thursday. America's foremost satirist of politicians and the media ushered out with a reunion of the many colleagues that he worked with during 16 years as a host. Leaving the studio for the first time, Stewart waved to the fans as he walked towards his waiting SUV with his family. Stewart 52 announced last winter that he was getting restless and it was time to move on. South African comedian Trevor Noah replaces him as host next month. Here are a few clips of the final Daily Show. Is that? Uh, I don't know what to say. Is, oh my God! I'm sorry. And here's Steve, John. Steve there's Carrell. a lot of applause. There's a lot of applause here in Cleveland. This is amazing. Yeah, thought I'd stop by because I got nothing else to do tonight. Nightly Show got bumped. Thanks, John. Let me just say I am so happy you're going to have some well-deserved time off. Do you want to leave the show, man? Like the brother I never had. Thank you so much, Rob, except uh, I'm, I think you have a brother, I think. But it has come to my attention you have been comparing me to Dick Cheney. That seems a bit harsh. No, no one's shutting the show down, boss. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving because I want to. It's... Whoa. That's it? Yeah. What a pussy. Oh. <laughs> I'm so excited thank, for you. Thank you. I'm so, oh, it's gonna, thing, just real quick, if you don't oh, mind. Sure, yeah, that's just... <laughs> Good job, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. God, you didn't have to bring me a cake. Oh, that's lovely. Wait, of course I did. It's your 70th birthday, huh? Jose, you're coming with me if you want to live. What? And just when I'm running for president. What a bummer. The Rocky Mountain Institute for men who get more distinguished and handsome as they age. We owe you, and not just what you did for our career by employing us to come on this tremendous show that you made. We owe you because we learn from you. We learn from you, by example, how to do a show with intention, how to work with clarity, how to treat people with respect. You hey, look at James Francis and Melkers. Donald Trump just announced he's running for president. <laughs> All hands on deck. All hands on deck. Yeah. All hands on deck. We can't do anything because we don't yet know everything. We cannot take action on climate change until everyone in the world agrees gay marriage vaccines won't cause our children to marry goats who are gonna come for our guns. This marks the end of our bulletin for today. Now for a reminder of our top stories. Environment Minister Mohamed Mashnout reveals that a number of tenders have been made by companies to handle Lebanon's waste disposal crisis. The Lebanese army arrests a suspect believed to be involved in the kidnapping of a university student after a car chase in East Lebanon. And 15 people are killed as a car bombing goes off in the eastern part of the Afghan capital, Kabul. Those are your top stories for today. I'm Lynette Tamim and I wish you all a very nice weekend.